Hey, Maxie, I want you to know you're beautiful and thank you for working on this. And I love you, boo. And uh, if if I were into beautiful men such as yourself, I'd probably buy you some Burger King. I gotta be honest. All right, let's just get this review going. Before we start, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone showing your support in these videos and continuing to interact in the community. You're all awesome, and I appreciate you greatly, and I know Godfoot does as well. Thank you so much for liking videos, subbing, and helping us make this channel possible. You're the best. You know, there's a lot of things in life that really help relax someone. You could go swimming, kick back and have a nice drink while watching a show, Maybe go to a spa, get a massage, you know, relaxing things. For me, however, nothing in life is more relaxing than the great American pastime of blowing up Nazis in video games. Got him, boys. It never gets old. That's obviously why companies make so many World War II games. So, 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 so many World War II games. Because of course, killing Nazis is what's really fun. So of course, when Rebellion announced that they were coming out with Sniper Elite 5 after so long, I just had to hop in and check it out and review it because heck, the previous game after some patches post launch was great and a ton of fun to run around in and do just that, shoot Nazis. There's a lot of examples of where a sequel didn't even live up to its original, like Dragon Age, and we won't talk about that. So the question is, five games in, is Sniper Elite 5 still just as good as it was initially in the franchise? No, not at all. Not in the slightest. It's actually way better. <laughs> idiot. When I went into this, I was expecting it to be a carbon copy of four. I expected to see minor visual improvements and possibly less janky facial animations, but generally expected the same loop. I was expecting it to be just World War II. I was going to snipe some Germans, do some stealth, done and done. And I would have been okay with that. However, the developers at Rebellion added a ton more, and we're going to break down what that all means right now. First off, the game is a massive visual improvement over the previous titles. Honestly, when I cranked this bad boy up to ultra on everything, including resolution, I was blown away at the jump in quality. The world and its environments are incredibly visually appealing to look at and explore. Water, clouds, particle effects, you name it, they're awesome looking. Structures and environments are very well done and give excellent visual storytelling, and the terrain itself is beautifully sculpted and looks superb with the settings I ran on on PC. The gun effects, explosions, impacts, they're all just so good. The shadows are incredibly well done, and there's really not a single complaint I have in a visual sense about the game. It just looks superb, especially on 1440p and above, and I can give it high praise for sure in that regard. As I mentioned, there's great visual storytelling in every handcrafted level that you go to, Posters around in an oppressed town, tons of propaganda and Nazi training places, hints of things that happen further on in the storyline, all just all thrown about. You've got ransacked houses with chairs overturned, bullet holes in walls and execution areas, dead bodies of civilians to show the brutality of the Nazi regime, and all of them without shying away from using the actual symbology the Nazis used during World War II. You got giant fortifications that fire constantly and shake the entire map. And oh my God, the sound effects for pretty much everything are the best they've ever been in Sniper Elite. Honestly, though, the best graphical thing about this game still remains the same, the X-Ray kills. For anyone that hasn't played a Sniper Elite game before, essentially when you fire a gun at an enemy, it'll do a slow-mo tracking camera. That's cool on its own, but each and every enemy has full internals that you get to see your bullet tear apart. This includes things like heart, kidneys, lungs, brain, eyes, nervous system, 
and the testicles. That's right. You get to annihilate Nazi testicles with a 308 sniper rifle shot at several hundred meters and watch them explode in full glory. I see another guy. Another officer. Dick shot. Damn. Oh, oh the testicles. Oh. oh, what a way to go. His nuts exploded. It's one of the most visually satisfying, albeit morbid, things that any game has ever done, and Sniper Elite 5 has taken it to a whole new level. The amount of physics calculations they've put into how a skull will shatter, how bones will break, or how blood will spurt must be nuts. It's just all so incredibly detailed and looks even better on ultra settings. Even if the gameplay wasn't great, which it is, this would still get me playing, as again, there's nothing like doming an SS officer in the head while he's spouting horrible propaganda and watching it explode into a billion pieces. There's also this majorly satisfying new weapon modding system in the game, with each part of a weapon allowing you to customize not only the stats of said weapon, but also the visual look of the weapons themselves. This is something that was entirely unnecessary to add, but I appreciate that they did, as you can create some pretty stunning combinations with what you have access to. You can also create some really cursed looking creations, the 1911 especially, and I look forward to the stuff they add in the future to further this mechanic. If I had one complaint about the looks of the system, it'd be that I want way more camos, finishes, and components. There's just not enough, and you can always go even more over the top in that regard. Story, which we'll talk about briefly, is the same as every single Sniper Elite game. You're a sniper dude fighting Nazis and trying to stop them from winning the war. It's not complex, deep, or offering anything significant or worth talking about. It's just more of a justification for why you are where you are and shooting who you're shooting. It's like the main character in every one of these games is stuck in a Groundhog Day loop of World War II, which kind of sucks for him, but is awesome at the same time. the eyeball it's one of the weakest parts of the series and it never seems to get any better it's been a constant same beat across the last five games but that's not the most important thing about sniper elite the gameplay is gameplay in the sniper elite games has always consisted of the following having a large to giant level objectives to complete in the level by running around sniping people from incredibly long distance stealthing around and killing nazis this game has taken that gameplay loop and improved upon it tremendously, with the maps themselves becoming much more intuitive as far as objectives go, as well as being far more complex in the exploration department. Every map has multiple hidden side objectives, collectibles, and lootables thrown around, with a full emphasis on encouraging you to go everywhere possible. Generally, you'll start a mission with a primary objective that puts you around the map, discovering new things to do as you move about. You've got to figure out how to approach each objective and location, with there being many options of how you could go about that. Need to blow up a shore gun? Well, you could stealth in, kill guards, and plant south charges, or you could also, instead, sabotage the generator and destroy the wiring to disable the weapon without ever needing to engage the soldiers. Each mission will have three separate crafting benches for you to locate and activate, entirely optional, unlocking unique parts for pistols, SMGs, and rifles respectively in the weapon modding system. I looked around for these because I wanted to and enjoyed doing so, and I never felt forced, and that's something rare in these, these days in gaming. Gunplay and combat in Sniper Elite 5 specifically is super satisfying. As I mentioned earlier, the X-Ray system is fantastic, with all the combat seemingly built around it and rewarding you for the best shots possible. Every kill gives XP to a level system that exists with skill points, various nodes that do certain things like keeping your heart rate down to allow you to aim better, and crazier kills will earn you more XP. You'll get bonus XP for doing things like firing around through someone's eye socket specifically, or puncturing both lungs while stealth. It's wild some of the multipliers you can get with well-placed bullets. Big shot.
Couple that with multiple types of ammunition for each weapon, soft point, armor piercing, subsonic, and less than lethal, each with different effects on x-rays, and you've got a lot of ways to cause death to Nazis to rack up those points. Honestly, I think my favorite round in the game would have to be the less than lethals, which are arguably way worse than just outright killing someone, as they suspect shooting someone in the head with 308 wooden bullets causes permanent brain damage and pretty much vegifies them. I'm not kidding, they just kind of slump and become a body pile. And at one point, my chat even started to refer to them as wheelchair rounds, as nobody that gets shot from them is going to ever walk normally again in the near future. A new mechanic that affects your campaign missions directly is the Axis Invasion System, virtually a red phantom invasion from Dark Souls, allowing enemy players around the world to take the role of a sniper Jaeger and hunt you down while you try to complete objectives. This can be turned off entirely so you don't have to deal with it, but it is incredibly fun from what I've experienced. It just adds so much tension and turns the game into an intense cat and mouse situation where snipers are hunting each other. Funnily enough, the entire game can be done in co-op with a friend and that's awesome. I found the most fun that I had was just to play with Godfoot and do the entire campaign together while doing dumb things. Oh, what? Where? It's great fun to line up a shot, accidentally hit a helmet, and then watch your buddy finish the enemy off with a second headshot. There's so many neat things you can think of while doing co-op that you normally couldn't do solo. Oh yeah, and you could do co-op while being invaded as an Axis player, which sucks for them, but really fun for you. Queuing as an Axis player is a total blast, and I suggest everyone give it a shot. It's cool to roam around the map and hunt down players trying to complete play their campaign and ambushing them in various ways, I mean, just check out this footage of me wiping out two people playing together. Got him, boys! There's more game modes to talk about, survival and multiplayer, with survival being a deal with waves and don't die mode like Mass Effects, and multiplayer functioning strongly like a Call of Duty deathmatch with sniper rifles. Survival was my favorite of the two for sure, but multiplayer was entirely fun in its own right. Each game mode has a separate loadout that you can customize on a main loadout page or in their respective queues, and from what I saw, every game mode except the Axis Invasion mode gives you XP for your main campaign. I leveled up a ridiculous amount of my main character by just playing a couple rounds of survival. It's not hard to max out, and I like the fact that there's crossover in that sense. Customization and selection of characters is a solid feature to each game mode, with the game modes outside of campaign having various clothing aesthetics and character styles for you to unlock as you rank up. In Axis Invasion, for example, you'll unlock various different German outfits and weapons the more players you kill, with 100 being the max unlock, encouraging you to play for quite a bit and get the best look, in this case, which is the Sniper Ghillie Suit. A season pass for this game exists as with previous Sniper Elite games, but I'm content enough with the content that they've given us in the current base game that I'm cool with it existing. I'll probably have to wait and see what they add to the season pass to see if it's justified, and we'll probably do an update video at some point, in every game, they add a mission that allows you to kill Hitler, and I, I guess that's something I'll check out for sure. As far as technical aspects of the game go, honestly, it's one of the biggest shortcomings it has. I crashed a lot while playing. Luckily, there's like a five minute autosave, but man, it's annoying to have to reboot the full game every time. Godfoot also blue screened. I think in total, I crashed about 11 times. Again, counting Godfoot's crashes, we were probably at about 20. So it's consistent and needs to be fixed as soon as possible. There's various and other annoying bugs, like getting stuck in animations and having to either quit or alt F4, which got old after the fifth or sixth time. I'm stuck in an animation, I'm dead. Come in here, please. You'll never stop me! There were also some connections issues, graphical bugs, body spazzing out, so on and so forth. Just lots of little technical problems needing to be resolved that definitely detract from it possibly getting a 10 out of 10. One final mention is that the facial animations are still really not the best. 
like the previous games, but they offer incredible hilarity in a lot of situations. One moment when you snipe someone, your character will have a completely deadpan face, and the next look like he's just shit his pants, unintended but funny as hell. Overall, Sniper Elite 5 is a vast improvement over the previous title, and one that I had an incredible amount of fun playing both solo and with a friend. The multiplayer stuff is all solid and the campaign was worth going through, so let me break down my final scores now. Gameplay gets a 10 out of 10. I love the loop, the combat's satisfying, and the x-ray mechanic motivates me. The multiplayer stuff rocks as well. Story gets a 2 out of 10. It's World War II. The characters are boring, their motivations are obvious, it's been done to death a million times, who cares at this point? Graphics get a 9 out of 10. As far as I could tell, there's no ray tracing or insane lighting stuff, but my god, for what it has, it looks gorgeous and incredible in every way. Audio gets a 9 out of 10. The gunshots, gore sounds, explosions, level ambience, mwah, all superb, great job. And value gets a strong 8 out of 10. I think I'm up to 30 or so hours at the point of writing this, and I could definitely do a lot more. It's a ton of fun with friends, and it's only $50 instead of the 60 or 70 that you get to ask to pay for games these days. So, 8 out of 10 in that regard. All of that is going to lead me to give Sniper Elite 5 a final score of an extremely strong 9 out of 10, with the potential to go even higher with technical fixes and DLC in the future. It's just a really fun game to play in general, and I suggest you give it a shot. Even if you didn't play previous titles in the franchise, this one is worth it, and I'm excited to see what Rebellion does with the series in the future. Anyway, that's it for this review. Let me know what you thought personally of it in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and like it. Feel free to share it with friends and help word of this channel get out. Just hit that subscribe button as well. Every little bit is appreciated. And until the next video, this is Delrith, and I'll be seeing you. Bye.